it's Kim and Jennifer from Fleece and Harmony. Hope everybody is doing great this evening. We're here with our hats on. Getting hot. Yep. Oh, I thought <laughs> we were going to make a joke about being minus 40 and snowing. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah, it's minus 40 and snowing. Not really. Not really. We just had a thunder and lightning storm. We did? Yesterday, yes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Apparently they say thunder and fall, no winter at all. Oh. Oh, boy. Mm. That's so not that... my best for farmers, though, is it? Not to have winter? Yeah. No. No. Anyway, we should tell, tell everybody where we are. We're uh, uh, the owners of the Fleece and Harmony Mill Shop and Mill, Will and Mill. <laughs> and uh, we're in Belfast, Prince Edward Island in Canada. Yay! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're like, we're kind of slow because we're getting tired. We're getting tired. It's the end of tour season. Yeah, and we're getting but, hot in these hats. No, we're going to leave them on though until we yeah. get to oh, where we're talking Lord, about. Oh, good Lord. We're wearing them for sweat. a reason. We're, gonna, yeah. we're wearing them for a reason. So yes. we'll get to that after. Okay. So um, we're just doing the regular stuff today. Yeah. Works in progress. We have a finished object. We're going to give a farm update. We have um, just some things about knitting and the shop update. And um, that's that's the regular yeah. stick that we do. So uh, we just like to invite everybody to, if you enjoy the podcast, that you can like and subscribe. And there'll be buttons at the end of the end of the yeah. podcast, or you know what to do. Scroll down and encourage your knitter friends to watch and subscribe. Yep. Yeah. And um, I guess that's it. We'll just get right into. Let's get that. on it. We had a yeah. lot happen. Yeah, we had a lot happen. So the farm update. Um, nothing too dramatic happened, no, which is just, great. It's been busy. Just regular stuff. So, um, we two weeks ago we separated the lambs. So what we do is um, uh, we have to keep the boys from the girls. They get a little. The boys are starting to are teenagers now. Yeah. Yeah. So they're uh, trying to kiss the girls. Yeah. The girls don't want anything yeah, to do with and it. the girls don't want anything to do with it, and we don't want the boys to charm any of the girls. Teenage either. pregnancy is not on the agenda. No. So <laughs> we've separated them. So now we we have to manage a couple different groups on the farm, which is par for the course. But um, unusually this year, we've left the ewe lambs with their mums. So they're kind of self-weaned, I would say. Yeah. And um, usually when there's weaning involved, when you take the lambs and separate them from their mothers, there's lots of bawling at night and mm -hmm. the burns. You have to almost let your neighbors know, except all our neighbors are farmers, so they know. Right. But we hear the next guy's cows. what's going on, yeah. What's going on when he's weaned. weaned his calves. Yeah, okay. so um, usually there's all that, that but we left uh, the lambs in with the ewes for quite a long time this year just because of the shortage of grass, because it was easier to feed them and be more efficient with the grass that we had. And we took the boys out, and honestly, there wasn't a word not they were like, at all. It was it was so much later? Yeah. Yeah. We the the boys were like, we're old enough to be on our own, and they kicked up their heels and they're over in their spot. And the mother said, "Good ridden." Yeah. Good so, ridden. <laughs> I think just a more natural timing, like yeah. to leave them a bit longer because you can buy the book. Uh, wean as early as eight weeks. Right. And uh, we typically did it around twelve. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was a it was a not sad parting for them no. this year. And that's no. No super stress. reassuring that maybe we made a good change and also that bawling, I mean, indicates stress. So yeah. they uh, they would get very stressed and they can get quite low as our vet yeah. puts it and be susceptible to getting little infections and things when yeah. they're under that kind of stress so yeah so it was i think that we did it we did it for reasons that were beyond our control like as far as the forage amount of forage going but i think it's a strategy from now yeah on. it just seems yeah. everybody's happier yeah so uh that's what we're that's what we're gonna do and the ewe lambs are still with their moms and they're they don't they don't really nurse anymore but um somebody i read somewhere where um there's maybe endorphins that are created when the, the lamb goes to the mother and it's kind of like a reward. So mm -hmm. it's a comfort thing. So they're not, the mothers aren't letting them drink anymore. And it seems to be, well, knock on wood, it seems to be that the ewes are drying off more gradually and it's mm -hmm. it seems they seem more comfortable too, I think. Yeah, so. it's after all, it's as nature intended it. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that's, so. so that's that, that yeah. was done. And then I think uh, last uh, time we talked about the fact that we were going to host Open Farm Day. Yeah. Woohoo! Woohoo! Wow, that was a <laughs> that was a day, Open Farm Day. Yeah. 
So we got our portable restroom installed. <laughs> it was beautiful. It's lovely. It's still here. <laughs> it's still here. They didn't. We love it. Out. We hope they never come get it. Yeah. So they haven't come picked it up. It's beautiful. Anyway, we got that. Uh, we had 280 people visit the farm, mm -hmm. and we were really happy to try it because we're all about like education and things like that. So we like uh, we like it when people want to learn about the farm. But man, oh man. <laughs> Um, so first of all, no smoking in barns. <laughs> that is a no-no. Yes, straw. Yeah, so Wood. nothing happened, nothing yeah, happened. Shavings. But we had to tell a guest yeah. that he couldn't have a cigarette around the, around the barn. Um, no chasing sheep when, when you're children. <laughs> so even though, even though it seems like fun, the sheep, hot. Is, the sheep yeah, don't like it's it. It's stressful for them. Yeah, and then uh, it, there was big, there was crowds. We did tours, and yeah. Ken Ken talked Red a lot. Ran his legs off. Yeah, we, Ken we, ran his legs off. We had three scheduled ones, but nobody could find where the schedule was, so we, he yeah. did 15. I don't know how many yeah, he did. Yeah, he just, he just talked. It was so. utter chaos. Yeah, and he's so funny because he's oh, his career was in the hospitality industry, in, in the hotel business, and uh, he, we were, when the crowd started to get really big, he and I were walking up from the barn and he was, he was grumbling under his breath, said a couple swear words, I think. And then as soon as he was within earshot of the people that were here, he's like, so who's ready for a tour? And he had this big hospitality industry grin. He you know, knows his job. Yeah, you know, anyway, it was, uh, it was good. So it was, um, it was fun. I'm not sure that we'll do it again. Yeah, and please teach your children respect for farm animals. Yeah, yeah, and it was and like how that stress, you know, like mauling and chasing and <laughs> yeah, and there are uh, there are places where you can interact with the with the animals um, on the island that are tamer, that, yeah, that, that are tamer and used to it. But our sheep are, are they're used to us. Yeah, but they're not really, you know, they're not really used to strangers and stuff. Yeah, so. they're livestock. They're yeah. not pets. So yeah, I mean, yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll, uh, sort of. we'll just talk about the photo shoot that we had. Yeah. As well. Yeah. That so. wasn't on the list, but that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, so we don't know if we'll do open farm day, but there was a really good, uh, we had the first year vet students from the vet yes. college come as well. So, we uh, we got to, we talked to them separately. So, they got to. We always love that. Yeah. We yeah. always love that. They Helping had, they the had a lot of really detailed questions. Yeah. So, we answered all those questions and stuff, and I think they, they enjoyed it. Was yeah. good for them too because yeah. some of them um, move here to go to the veterinary college and they haven't been to a farm before yeah. either or they're going to be small animal yeah. vets or yeah, whatever they still so. do a large animal rotation i think even if they're just going to work with small yeah. animals yeah. yeah so that was uh, that was really good so and then we had the biggest knit night ever Ah, yeah. Yeah. So, in fact, a couple of our regular people weren't able to come. It would have been even more big. But then. we had a group, uh, we had a knitting group from Edmonton that came to Prince Edward Island to experience the PEI Fiber Trail. Gables and, and Cables. Gables and Cables. <laughs> hashtag for Instagram. If you yeah. want to look up there, some of their pictures. Yeah. Um, really avid knitters. Great. And uh, they were very well organized. They, yeah. They gave us lots of advance notice that they were coming because it's a group of seven seven people um i think they hit every like a lot of hot spots i think they on had that. a great trip yeah yeah we hope they had a great trip and they joined us for knit night so that was seven people on top of the other people that we that we have some of our regulars weren't able to yeah uh, unfortunately to come, but yeah yeah so uh, but we had a great time so how many people were here 11 or 13 i don't know yeah, it was a crowd. Like yeah. we, we posted a picture. Yeah. It's a big. Jennifer had to stand on a chair and get to, to try to, get to, to try to get everybody in. Yeah. So it was a it was a fun uh, a fun night, and uh, met lots of great new people. Yeah, and, and had the some project projects. Oh wow, yeah. 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 There's really uh, it's always great to see other people's. There's projects. so much out there you can do. Like we're yeah. uh, just such a narrow scope of what's available to make, and it's always so great to have because you tend to get like a little closed you know when you're yeah. a group like you're all kind of knitting the same thing right. or you get exposed to the same things and then people come from outside you know yeah and uh it really sort of um broadens the repertoire of yeah things yeah that yeah, was really great so and then the final thing the photographer you didn't finish yeah oh okay. I'm guessing that's what okay. I was gonna say the final thing is that um uh I don't I don't know if we showed um Ernest's photography before 
but you often no. see it behind us on the yeah. on the block. So. I'll um, I'll just quickly go grab a couple a little something. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, so our now good friend Ernest Cadigan yeah. is a, you know, his sister was in the shop this afternoon. Oh, really? I did yeah. forget, didn't get you to tell oh. that. Anyway, so oh. now we've met his sister. Oh, great. Ten children in their family. Oh, wow. I think she said okay. seven girls and three boys. Yeah. They're from Glace Bay, Cape Breton, actually. Oh, oh We wow. had no idea. Okay. So, Ernest, we, we love <laughs> you. We know all about you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know you, but we know about you. <laughs> Uh, so he does this kind of work with sheep. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful prints. And we do have them in the shop. I'm not probably ever going to be able to list them online. However, if you like these ones, by all means, yeah, we email have, us. I think we have most, uh, most everything that he's done with sheep. Yeah. And he's done uh, new ones with owls. And we're big fans of owls yeah. around here. We so love the owls. We love owls. So, so he's got, we've got those in the shop too. Um, these barn board frames, he's not able to get anymore. But they're so beautiful with the yeah. sheep and the barn. Um, and he just does the most beautiful editing on these photographs. Yeah. And uh, these are some Cotswolds that live over in Nova Scotia. Yeah. Um, that he typically works with quite often, but he was here. Yes, we were so happy. And a certain mm -hmm. sheep had a special photo shoot with Ernest. Yes, yes. So guess who the star was of the photo shoot? Mm -hmm. Diana. Diana. With the girl with the braids. Uh huh. But there was a little bit of a mm -hmm. incident. Yes. So, speaking of <laughs> speaking of stressing your animal. I know. So I was wardrobe assistant for the <laughs> yeah. shoot, and I. When I guess her. I have to say he specifically requested Diana because I guess it's it's not that usual to have a sheep that's willing to dress up and wear hats. Yeah, yeah. and she really does it with very little stress. As yes. long as you scratch her under the chin, she'll just sit there chewing her cud with the hat on. Yeah, she loves it. However, I had the idea to put a lovely silk mohair scarf that matched a bonnet I had. Yeah. And I don't think we ever got her in the bonnet. I don't know. Anyway, I should have <laughs> saved that for last because I put the scarf on and it was totally fine. Yeah. It was silk mohair, so it weighed nothing, nothing. and it yeah. was in like a little thing. And then the wind took it and it <laughs> went into her peripheral vision and she really didn't like that. No. That so she took off running to try to get it off. Too much for... Yeah, and so he got a really cute uh, print of her running with her scarf on. And yeah. um, and the, it's I'll, like blowing. <laughs> of course. You know, even though we don't have the prints online and stuff, no matter where you are, you must go follow his Instagram yeah. uh, to yeah. see at least the Diana print. And I do share his stuff on our Instagram yeah. regularly too. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's really cute. Should have done the scarf last. But then yeah. Ken was able to calm her down. She wanted nothing to do with me after that no. whatsoever. <laughs> um, so then we had to bring in another handler to get through the uh, fur hat with earlugs. <laughs> There's going to be a whole series. The portion ball cap. <laughs> And I forget. Oh, she's got, the, he's, she's got a ball cap on too. Yeah, and there's like a Sherlock that. Holmes. Yeah, I saw that one. Tweed thing. And uh, anyway, yeah. we put a bunch of stuff on her, but I don't think we ever got her with the Easter bonnet after all that. But I'm not oh, sure where. Yeah, because the know. scarf matched the what do the you call flower. that kind of hat? It was like a straw hat with yeah. flowers on it. Yeah. It would have been so like beautiful. a bogart kind of. Not yeah. really. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, so she was great, and he got some really good shots. He put he put an apple on her head. She's um, very very. You can just you can hang out with her. Yeah, for she doesn't like she's she always. If you feel something, I think we talked about this before. If you feel something pushing against you in the field when you're working, it's her. Yeah, she's always so around she did you. not like yeah. the scarf, but she was very good for the hats after yeah. that. But and the as scarf long as you get the scratches right in between each shot, she just stands there, sits there like this, puts up with you. Yeah, she's yeah. a very a snuggly girl. Yeah. She's known far and wide for her snuggliness. <laughs> and she was really just born that way. We don't yeah. have another sheep like that. No. She took right to us. And her daughter, Diana 2.0, is yeah. also like that. Similar. Yeah, not, not as much. Not as much. And but... she wasn't a bottle lamb. It's not like we handled no. her. No. No. She just just crazy, incredible she sheep. She would be the type of sheep that caused sheep to be domesticate, domesticated yeah, in the first place. Yeah, she'd be the one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she began the evolution into domestication. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so that was like really good fun. Yeah. So yeah. we can hardly wait to see what they're all yeah, going to look like. Yeah, we've seen so. a few little snippets. Um, and he went around the farm with his lovely wife, Margot, taking all kinds of photos of horses and some of my Irish wolfhound and... Who knows what else? They were here for quite a while, yeah, so we're really excited. Fun. And we were really happy to meet him in person because we've always just corresponded with them or talked to him on yeah. the phone. And um, they're just lovely people. So, yeah. yeah, and if we get the prints that are of our sheep um, and we're going to have them on a regular basis, obviously, then we'll put those online. Yeah, yeah. 
Great. Okay. So that was uh, that's the the last two weeks. We were yeah. no wonder we're tired. I know. Jeez. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna go right to the finished objects, right. which is hat number one. Owlet hat. Yes. So which I could hardly wait to take off because I'm getting so hot. So I had to knit this hat about three times. I don't know. There was nothing difficult about the pattern, but man, I struggled. <laughs> I, when you tried to knit it at night. I know that wasn't even the excuse. Oh. I, they fixed it for me at night. I had everything backwards oh. where I was supposed to repeat in a row. I took that as repeat the row where I was supposed to repeat the row. I went to the next row. Oh, the, I know it was a oh. disaster. Like I couldn't read the pattern. You weren't paying reason. attention. And it's well, not because the pattern wasn't well written. No, I just am super, super stunned. Oh. <laughs> like I thought it was going to be easy and then that made it difficult. So yeah. Maybe it was too easy. I ripped this way more than I ever had to rip bear schwa. <laughs> so for those of you who are concerned about drawing a sweater like that, trust me. If you, if you knit the owl hat, hat, you'll be successful. Well, well, it's just a matter of the, giving it the proper respect. Yeah. So you your respect. eyes are cute. I see my stash of Swarovski crystals. Yeah, but I actually don't like the eye color. Oh, okay. Would gray be better? Yes. Yeah. It's so high contrast that it makes you not see the owl. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So I didn't sew them all on for that reason. I did want it to show it like as an FO, but I've got um, our mother working on some more appropriately colored. I have like slate gray ones. Okay, I, I didn't see. Yeah. I went through a lot of our stash, yeah. our stash oh, okay. to see, but this was sort of what I started with, and I don't like them. Oh, okay. Um, but the hat was lovely, and yeah. there was nothing wrong with the pattern other than that. I, I was... Uh, you were not... Yeah, although it. there is a little minor, I think, errata in the decrease section, but people have noted it on Ravelry. Oh, okay. When you go in, um, you can look at the notes of other people who've made the project, and I found the same thing. But I have no confidence to say it was the pattern at this point because I screwed up the hat so many times in other <laughs> ways. And I had about this much of a ball of yarn left, so if you bought the Heather Heatherdale loaf, oh, which so is it's now just about gone, perfect then? yeah, it was more than enough. Yeah, but I did but go not, down a needle size too, but not I'm too loose. too much, just the right amount. Well, for it was people. A pretty yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you're it's not gonna make anything so. else with it. You can no. add a pom pom with it. Oh, cool. Yeah, there's yeah. probably enough. I'm gonna take this off. That's really off. <laughs> um, so yeah, and I just I did a little modification. I did go down an additional half a millimeter in the ribbing. So I did a 5.5 millimeter in the ribbing and a six in the hat. And the pattern just says six and a half throughout. Mm -hmm. Now I knit loose, so that six and a half is probably fine. But I do like going down the yeah. ribbing too. Yeah. And uh, it's a lovely project. I'm really excited when I get the proper color of eyes yeah. on it. The other thing is the wool is actually more gray now than it appears in the skein yeah. because we can only wash it so much during processing. It's very and silvery. It's really yeah, nice. I didn't, where I didn't dye this one, there was actually still a bit of PEI red dirt color on, on the oh, yarn, okay. which is not unusual. It's just mill, mill yarn isn't usually particularly clean. Yeah. Um, but ours usually is because I've usually dyed it and that right. just gets rid of every little last bit of dirt. So the color of it actually did get more silver yeah, once I rinsed it's beautiful. it. It's really, really nice. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very excited. This is definitely going to be my winter hat of choice yeah. for this winter. Um, but I need a different color eye. Yeah. So we don't have any more of no. this yarn left. So that's unfortunate, but we'll probably make more. We'll make later. it again. Yeah. We'll make yeah. it again. And then when we make it, we'll let everybody know. But, yeah. uh, they're just so cute. Yeah. But the eyes really distract from. Yeah. They're a little bit, uh, yeah. The slate gray ones will be perfect. Yeah. If I have, if I have those round ones in that, that color, you can, you can, it'll be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Getting them right in the right spot is no no treat. I oh, is that you. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Seven, 14 of them you got to sew on there. Oh, anyways. anyways beautiful. So that's the owlet hat. Done. I finished yeah. something. Yeah. At one point, about four days ago, everything I was working on had a massive mistake in it that I just <laughs> didn't want to deal with. So my <laughs> knitting productivity has gone right down. Oh. And my arm is still sore from my Ahava overdoing it. And I just got into a bit of a mess. But I did so finish what's, that. So what's... With Alhava, you're not showing it today, but no, I'm just I'm still at the sleeves. I haven't oh, okay. touched it. Yeah, but your month. hands were sore. Yeah, yeah, and actually doing the cabling with that really thick yarn made oh. everything hurt even worse. So yeah. you can't overdo it. No, it's not worth it. You have to take a little break. Yeah, and I did try, but it's it's persistent anyway. Yeah. It'll sort so that's out. uh that's it. 
uh, for finished, for objects. finished yeah. objects. So I'm glad one of us got one done. Yeah. Uh, Me speaking too. of finished objects that we're not going to talk about, I I have my I'm wearing this sweater. It's not a handmade one actually. It's just a uh, one that I that I purchased. But this was kind of the inspiration for your Swarovskis on your ranunculus. Yeah. So I, yeah. I like this sweater. I think I want to recreate. I'm I'm not. I don't think I'm into the cropped crappy sweater so I think I'd like to kind of reproduce this one it's more of a tunic type mm -hmm. but now that I've seen how your ranunculus knits up I think I can probably do something similar with like this out of our own yarn so I think mm -hmm. I'll do that I'm also wearing my my oh, piece of nice. pin okay <laughs> all right so um now my works in progress are the same works in progress so the the birds of a feather just keeps getting bigger and bigger so I actually worked on this quite a lot. Um, I kind of put my, well, I worked on my Joe Bat's arm last week and this week I was working on my birds of a feather and um, I've got two sections. I got two sections done. And this morning I almost had a little bit of a debacle because I went to pull it out of my project bag and about a quarter of the stitches in the mohair <laughs> Of the needles. I really need to get the stoppers for the ah, end of the needles. Yeah, we didn't order those. Yes, we okay. should, because now I understand. I always thought, well, just put your thing like yeah, I do this. No, we'll get them. But it doesn't. Uh, I and and let's just put it this way because I usually knit with my coffee, in like propped up in bed in the morning for about an hour or so. And Ken was uh, doing something on his iPad there, so we were he was having our coffee and stuff. And uh, he saw what happened, and he said, "Yeah, I think I'm gonna go downstairs <laughs> for a while." He didn't even want to be there because I was like, "Oh no!" What? But anyway, luckily I didn't mess around with it, and it uh, they they. Uh, what is this disaster? Well, the needle just went through the. Oh, God. Yeah, so this is this is how things happen. Much, yeah, okay. okay, so now um, this, like I said before, this is as big as it gets as far as the number of stitches. But um, the shape is the shape is changing now. Mm -hmm. Now it's it's straight on on mm -hmm. one side. So now you're moving towards. I can hardly wait to see this finished. I just I don't know. I, every week I say every episode I say that I just love it, but I really do. So. It's uh, I can't I can't stretch it out all the way because it's bigger than the needles now, but it's really uh, I don't want to lose it again. Okay, look at the component stoppers. Yeah, we'll get them. I think now I understand why you why mm -hmm. you need them. So there's that, and then I'm still working on the last panel of my Joe Bat's arm. So there's not really much to see. It just looks the same as it I'll did put it down here. So that looks yeah, awesome. it just looks the same as it did before, but. Um, I don't know if I showed my my beautiful oh. ball. There's only knitters will understand. I bought a nostapin, a nostapin. I think that's how you yeah. pronounce it. And I I just I have a, I have a ball winder. I have like I can I have a swift. I can but this is really I love this. Hmm. It's very this. You're all. I'm almost like it's firm. Okay. Yeah, it's firm. So. Um, anyway, I'm still still going, but I've uh, decided to do because I'm doing this with um, all the cables without cable needles. I'm just doing it's a two by two cable everywhere. There's cables, so two by two cable is very easy to do without cable needles. So we're gonna just insert a little um, demonstration of how to do that in case uh, you don't know how to do it. And I'll I'll do it slow. I'll do right and left leaning cables and uh, you'll be able to see how it's it's believe it or not it's making it faster but it's still very very slow because i'm a slow knitter and i'm not working on it all the time so um but somebody uh, i posted on her ravelry page they finished their their uh, was shaping up to be beautiful. yeah and it's in the uh, project page on our ravelry if you want to go project thread thread yeah. sorry the project thread in our ravelry group if you want to go take a look at it it's just amazing hmm yeah, it's really nice. Good. Okay. okay. So here's a quick little tutorial on making cables without a cable needle. So I've got two examples here of uh, two by two cables. So four stitches all together, four in each of the cables. This cable leans to the right and this cable leans to the left. And I'm going to show you how to do both of those without... Um, 
without using a cable needle. You're just going to use your knitting needles to do it. So I'm first I'm going to just knit over to where the first cable is. Okay, so I've knit over to the first stitch of the four stitch cable that I'm going to make. I want these two stitches, the third and fourth stitches, to come over the first and second stitches. So the stitches that are going to be in the back get put on your right hand needle and the stitches that are going to be to the front are the ones that will be dangling on your work for a few seconds. So I'll just show you how that works. We're just going to pick up the first two stitches. They're saved on my right hand needle. Now I'm just going to drop the last two stitches, put the first two stitches back on the left hand needle and quickly pick up the stitches that I dropped and twist them over the front. So you see from this why you need uh, yarn. Sorry, I'm just gonna move these up. I've got thick needles to show. You need a yarn that's gonna stay in place. You can't use something too slippery. So now I'm just going to knit the four stitches the first two will be a bit tight because those are the ones that you twisted over. Three, four. So my cable twist is done and you can see that the, the stitch it's making a, that little uh, ridge where your cable will be. I'm gonna knit over to my left hand cable and we're gonna show that one. Okay, so here we are at the left hand cable and you can see from the direction that the, this cable is going that stitch one and two are now going to be the ones that are in the front going over stitch three and four. So the same principle applies. The stitches that are going over on the front are the ones that are going to be dangling. So I have to pick up stitch three and four somehow and then uh, for, and put them back on the needle. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my thumb over the four stitches that are involved in the cable. I'm going to insert my needle into the back of stitch three and four, and I'm gonna take all four stitches, courage, dear hearts, <laughs> take all four stitches off the needle on the left, and then I'm just going to reinsert the left-hand needle into the stitches that are twisted, and now my stitches are reversed on my needle, and I'm just gonna knit. And if you have a pattern that does um, cables that are a mix of knit and purl, you just do it the same way and you just, uh, you just follow your chart or your pattern instructions. Okay, and I'm just gonna stay on film while I just knit over a couple stitches so you can see what happened there. It's gonna be easier. So you see now I've made the twist to the left and the other stitches are in the back. Then you just continue on. Usually this cable is two by two and I've got uh, three rows in between the twists. So I'm twisting on the right side. I'm um, purl, knit, purl, and then I'm twisting again. So that gives you that, that type of twist. Okay, so I also worked on this. Done a fair bit of ripping on this one <laughs> because I have the pattern memorized. <laughs> but not quite. <laughs> so I need to dig the sheet out because last night was ridiculous. It was like knit six, rip out four. Knit oh, six, really? rip out four. Oh. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It was getting ridiculous. Anyway, so that's enough of that nonsense. But I do love the rhythm of not having to look. Yeah. And I don't have to look every row, but I have to look in between rows. Yeah. Oh, it's oh. backwards. It's awesome. It's so bright in here with the lights because it's so dark outside. I can barely see in front of myself oh. or in the front of my own face. Okay. So I still, this is probably about a third done. Yeah. Lots left to do, um, but I still love it. And it's going to be a really, really nice shawl. And mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I, first of all, I really enjoy working on it. It's mm -hmm. not, it's okay TV knitting and it's just really soothing. It's very repetitive, but interesting. Uh, it's pretty satisfying. Um, and I don't know. I just like it. Mm -hmm. It has a okay, nice thank rhythm. goodness. I thought that was another mistake. Yeah, <laughs> it has a nice rhythm. And of course, this is um, Virgo by Ash Alberg, and it is done in Alden Lace. Yeah. This is November Scott color. Great. 
So that's it. That's yeah. w- and the Ahava I'll show when I get back to the sleeves, which I hope to do by next episode. Right. And now yeah. you have, you're not working on anything else besides those. Your hat's done now. Nope. So now it's Ahava and your Virgo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so now we're going to talk about a little special project that we're doing. Yeah, that's done actually. Yeah. So it's been a year in the making. Yeah, so <laughs> um, one of the amazing things about Prince Edward Island is all the talent that's here that you don't even realize. There are a lot of people who can, if they can work remotely mm-hmm. or their job is such that they can live anywhere, um, a lot of them choose to live somewhere like this right. and you meet these amazing people that just yeah. wander into your life and you find out incredible things like that they have worked for NASA before yeah uh, from their you know or, or like just I don't know it's I don't want to say it's like an artist colony or well, the guy that works for NASA NASA is not an artist no I know but but a lot <laughs> of a lot of them are though yeah 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 so it's just really cool anyway so one of our neighbors is Lori Joy Smith And we were wearing pins of hers in our second episode way back last Christmas time. Yeah. Um, And just, just, she adopted a bottle in and came for a friend for it. And we met her that way. She lives literally two minutes away. I'm Mm -hmm. over there whenever she calls for sheep stuff. So I know I can tell you, it takes me all of 40 seconds to get to her house. And she's a very talented children's book author and illustrator. Mm -hmm. And of course, the minute I found that out, I was all over her like a dirty shirt. Yeah. Um, and she was kind enough to illustrate, do a couple of illustrations for this story when it was just a blog post right? Okay. written by, um, Claire Moxon Waltz. And you can go read the story still on our blog. I think that's the last time we blogged. Yeah. It's still number one on the blog. We're not right. bloggers. No. We're, we're, we're vloggers. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a lovely story about the sheep of our farm getting together to make sure that they have a nice Thanksgiving. Right. And probably giving it away a little bit with the cover here, but um, <laughs> it's got some of Lori's illustrations in it and we're now selling them. Yeah. So these are up online, you can buy them. We're working really hard um, to make sure we can guarantee shipping by um, Canadian Thanksgiving, but it's gonna be a bit tight, but definitely for American Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. we'll be able to get them out to you. So. Yeah. Just sort of um, watch our Instagram for updates on how that's going. But they are available for order now. And I'm hoping to get them back from the printer by October 3rd, which will give us plenty of time Mm. to get them out to our Canadian customers. But for sure, in the U.S., you're safe. Um, So one thing I will say is that Lori is a professional illustrator, Mm -hmm. and so we didn't want to ask her to do too many (laughs) illustrations. But they're very, very adorable. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I would say this is a book that you're going to read to someone yeah. and not hand to the child to read because it is text heavy. Yeah. It's quite a detailed story um, yeah. that Claire has written. It's a, an adorable one, yeah. um, but it's probably a lot of reading for the age group that would enjoy it, you know, yeah. page after page of text. Yeah. So it's a fun sit down and share it with the family um, mm-hmm. type of thing. And of course it features our sheep and the sheep that we've named that actually live here. Uh, and it takes place on our firm. Right. And it's super cute. And you can yeah. preview it on our blog. So if yeah. you think you would like a printed copy of it, that's up now. And of yeah. course, I'll have a link to it in the, where you can buy it in the show notes. Yeah, it's fun. Just adorable. Like, how cute. Yes. And um, it is a true story that our sheep love apples. Yeah. Because all of our hedgerows have old apple trees in them. Yeah. And I can tell you there's not an apple on the ground anywhere where the sheep have access to. Yeah. So they uh, they like to eat them. A lot. Yes. They need them all, which is great because otherwise you have to rake them up. <laughs> yeah. And we were a little bit concerned that maybe that wasn't great for sheep, but they seemed to... Oh, gosh. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Too late. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, just look at these. Yeah. I'm in love with it. So yeah, cute. cute. So if you have any wee ones that would like a story about how sheep celebrate Thanksgiving, there, there you, you go. go. Yeah. That was a really fun side project, which I totally didn't have time to do, but... Somehow, in my spare time, we we managed to get it done. I would have preferred to have it done two weeks ago so that we wouldn't be so cramped on the shipping date to get to actual Thanksgiving, but that's how it is. And rumor has it that perhaps Claire might be working on a Christmas one. I didn't even know that. Yeah, maybe. Claire is fantastic. Yeah, the writing is hysterical. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good sense of humor, and she loves sheep. Yes. You can tell. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So thank you, Claire, and thank you, Lori. All I really did was assemble it. 
and uh, and learned a new software organize program. Organize it, yeah. In design, yeah. what a nightmare. Yeah, learned would be a stretch. Yeah, okay. Managed mm -hmm. to get something out of would be a <laughs> more apt description of what I did, and then still had to pay a quick copy to fix a little bit. But anyway, yeah. got it done. It was going to be on uh, what eleven by seventeen. It was going to be this big. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. Coffee table book. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. well, we have a great a great person that uh, they just sized right. it down for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're good. I am. I did not know what I was doing. Yeah. Okay, but I well, I think you did a pretty good job. Yeah, I got it done. Time. Let's yeah. put it that way. Right. Okay. <laughs> All right, and then uh, the next topic on for discussion is Knit East, yeah. which is the yarn festival that I don't know what you call it a festival. Yeah, yeah, the yarn festival that takes place in St. Andrews by the Sea oh, in New beautiful. Brunswick, which is just a gorgeous, gorgeous place. I can't wait to go. We'll be working the whole time. Yes, we <laughs> have. We're going. It's our first um, yarn event that we're we're actually bringing our yarn to. So we have, you know, yeah. like all things we do, we have no idea what to expect. Yeah, and well, we sort of have a little bit of an idea. Yeah, because we... at the Knitters Frolic, I was in there in the Purple Pearls booth. Yeah. This is the first time we've had our own booth that that's we're responsible right. for setting up. And believe me, that's half the battle. Yes. <laughs> and we've been trying to make yarn like crazy. I know, and I'm just looking over there. Everything I've made has sold. Yeah. So, <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, we, well, fortunately, <coughs> I guess, or I don't know what to say. We, we are making it, but we're not putting it away. We're actually putting it out on the shelf because we do still have customers coming. And... Um, a great hard, deal of it hard, has disappeared already. Hard to keep up. We still have a week to go. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Week. Yes. And uh, the big news in the mill is that we got a lace weight spinner. Yes. So for everybody that likes um, that likes our lace and our sock yarn, we're going to be making that on a new spinner, which yeah. is we think is going to be open a whole new world for us because well I have two spinners one I'll do the heavier yarns on on one of them and I'll do the the things that are very fine on on the other so we'll be able to be a little bit more efficient so that's going to yeah. be uh, that's going to be fantastic unfortunately there is is only a week left, yeah but and we're, we're frequently out of stock in the shop like yeah. it's really our sock yarn and the Alden lace if we we've just we're just we can never keep it in stock yeah. in every color for more than a week and then we get behind and yeah. this spinner should really help so unfortunately we had probably a lot of disappointed customers and we probably lost a lot of sales because yeah. it's never there in a lovely display with all 10 colors right. or whatever because um we always had to be sharing the spinner with all the other weights that we do yeah so, so we uh, when you order online we make if we don't have it in stock we make it right away to to um make sure that the people that order online get their get their product and we always do a full batch of the color but literally i actually had a customer leave with some Alden lace and amethyst brooch a week ago still with the with the tie on it and she i couldn't skein it put it in a skein for her because it was still damp so i had to teach her how to do this twist the skein yeah and she said oh she wasn't she said well when i get back home i'm gonna order it and then she said well just show me what you do and then she said oh i think i can do that i'll take it so yeah she's <laughs> cutting right off the hanger and going out yeah it's so such I didn't a even, shame didn't even hit the shelf like as a business it's a great problem to have we're always chasing demand yeah um, but it is stressful to disappoint people and you know, it's yeah. better than the opposite problem, which would be up to our eyeballs and yarn and no customers. Right. We would not want that. No, no. Um, but we are hoping to make things just a little bit yeah. easier on ourselves with yeah. this so we, new machine and it's yeah. a beautiful machine and yeah. we want to thank the Belfast Mini Mills they got it for to getting really it to quickly. us so quickly and, yeah. uh, they're really, really good to us. Yeah. So. They're excellent. So the great neighbors. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, so Knit East. So that's at St. Andrews by the yeah. Sea in New Brunswick. So we'll be there with the or without of, yarn. Yeah, we'll be there <laughs> on the week of October uh, 5th. Yeah, but we're yeah. bringing all the cocoa knit stuff and that we're yeah. going to show now too. Yeah. And stuff. So we'll bring some other things from. We'll try to create like a little shop. Yeah atmosphere yeah in our, in our booth so. in our little booth yeah. yeah exactly so and we're really uh we're not it's going to be busy for sure but we're I, I don't think we're really too upset about the fact we're going to have a little break from the farm work either but 
Can, can. I just love that property. I'm just yeah. excited to stay in the hotel and yeah. meet people. I'm really excited to get out with the public yeah. and, and meet some of you lovely folks. And yeah. 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 It'll be fun. Yeah. A little change of scene. Yeah. It's nice to get out. <laughs> it's yeah. nice to get off the property occasionally. Yes. <laughs> oh, and we went to see an amazing show. You know, it has been a crazy two weeks. Yeah. We went to see this show um, by uh, Our parents arrived unexpectedly. Yeah, so I had of. to get two extra tickets a yeah. couple hours before, but that was fine. We managed yeah. to do it. Yeah. Um, and it's written and performed by a musician who is originally from Prince Edward Island, Tara McLean. And she's been um, recording music since the 90s, but, uh, and I listened to her way back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, she wanted to do something at her home mm -hmm. um, for Prince Edward Island. And it's a review of sort of famous Atlantic songwriters. And she does just a beautiful job. And we enjoyed it so much. And it's in a little theater here called The Mac. Yeah. And it was sort of like a cabaret setting. Yeah, we were at round tables. tables. Got to have your and wine while you were watching. it's just tremendously well done. So many talented people. So if you're local or if you're visiting, I'm sure it will run again next year. And we really highly recommend going and seeing it. Yeah. And all of the... Um, songwriters that she introduced are well known here so it's yeah. not like there was any big mysteries however i learned a lot yeah. about how how famous they were i mean they're just local i shouldn't say just local but they're local people and you have this kind of um you know well we don't follow record assumption. sales and yeah <laughs> yeah assumption about what their careers were like they we know that they were prolific and they had they had international careers but I had no idea the scope of some of them, uh, some of them that are... Yeah, and the stories, some of them were, you know, experienced tragedy in their lives, and yeah. she told it all in a very heartfelt and sincere manner, and, you know, yeah. one quick tip, we didn't, I mean, there's a very famous Canadian country singer, Hank Snow, well, we had right. no idea that he gave Elvis his first... Um, appearance at the Opry by letting him go before him. Yeah. No clue. Yeah. And he's yeah. from Nova Scotia. So yeah. it was really, really cool. And yeah, you think if you're from the Atlantic provinces, you know all about Stan Rogers and Ron Hines or whatever, but yeah. she really made it interesting. Yeah. Even if you think you know quite a lot about them Yeah, and it was all done so respectfully, a lot of them have passed away. Um, it was just a great, great yeah, it was show. A really nice evening. Yeah. And, uh, it runs, um, I, I think she's doing it again. I would next imagine year. it's yeah. been a few years. I'm yeah. sure she changes it up a bit every yeah. year. But so there's only three shows left this year. But it's if done. Oh, it's done. They now? were last week. Uh, yeah. Oh, she's okay. back in Salt Spring Island. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if, uh, but if you, um, if you're coming next year and you're looking at the, it's it's put on by the Confederation Center of yeah. the Arts. So if you're looking at things to do, um, you know, of course they they're the same people that put Anne of Green Gables on. Yeah. But they're also the ones that uh, produce this show as well. So yeah. you should check out the schedule for next yeah. year if you're if you're in. It's a really nice. Uh, we loved it. We were so happy we yeah. went. So. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Okay, so now we have to uh, we have put a lot in the shop update. Yes. Yeah. So where do you want to start? Well, I want to start by saying that we now have clothes pins again. Yes. So episode twenty, two episodes again, we ago we had a lovely interview with Sandra, the clothes pin lady, and if you haven't seen it, you must go back and watch that one. Right. Um, and unfortunately, halfway through the wonderful success of our um, promotion of her clothes pins, her bandsaw broke, yeah. which you would have What's heard about to if do? you watched. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you watched us last episode, and so now we just refer to that as clothespin gate or yeah. clothespin madness. Yes. Um, so I guess her new lovely bandsaw arrived. Did it? I don't, I don't know. know. Or maybe she, she went had to, to go a to her neighbor's shop house to get yeah. these ones done. But now we have lots <coughs> again, and all is right with the world with the clothespin. So if you mm -hmm. missed out, um, they're great. And yeah. if you're interested in them, definitely go back and watch that interview in episode 20. And thank you, thank you, thank you to all the customers who ordered them right off the bat and ended up having to wait two weeks or a little bit more than that to yeah. get their pins because of the bandsaw it's debacle. It. Maybe it's actually bandsaw gate. Bandsaw gate. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, they're back in stock. And they're... Yeah. they're and a lot yeah. of people have, have ordered them. Yeah. yeah. So um, sometimes two or three dozen at a time, and they're right. well worth it. Right. So that was all a thing. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's safe safe to go back yeah. <laughs> and look for pins again. I think we better do the yarn next because I want to take this hat off. Yeah, I know. We're probably getting <laughs> on. Okay, so you chat and I'll hold. All right. So you may recall... I don't know what episode it is, so we'll put it down below that we... Uh, oh, I'll never find that again. You'll never find Not it? Not unless you're going to go back and watch 
Let's talk right. about the sheet. All right. So we'll try to find which episode it is. But we talk about um, the a DK yarn that we made, and yeah. we made it actually for um, a designer from Montreal. Yeah. Call it her company is called Swen. Crystal is her name. And uh, we actually didn't really know what she was gonna knit with our yarn. So she asked us, uh, she asked for samples, we sent her samples, she gave me a few specs, and we, we spun a yarn for her to um, to do knits, knit wear with. And these are the hats that she made with our yeah, yarn. They're super cute. Yeah, so this is Poppy's super in bloom. Super warm. Yeah. yeah, and they're, she came this summer. Yeah. So it was like about a year ago that we did them, did them for her. Yeah. And she came this summer to the farm and they took pictures here and they did some filming and things for their social media. And we each got a hat. Yeah. So, and this is the one in Poppies in Bloom. Yeah. And they're just, they're like super warm. <laughs> and so what happened? They're really well made. Yeah. They're all double brimmed here. Yeah. They're yeah. double brimmed and um, super cozy and we just love them. And, and I guess. Flattering. Yeah, they're kind of like a, a traditional toque, yeah. like your, I don't know, a mariner's... It's like a mariner's cap. Yeah, yeah, mariner's cap. And she's doing them in a bunch of different colors, so we're spinning those uh, yarns for her right now. And uh, we decided we'll do like an overrun, more than what she needs, because we'll put them on our shelves yeah. as well. So. so if you did just watch, because I know a lot of people have just binge watched, we had Fox and Kids and we had Pumpkin Patch. Yeah. And both of those are available again. Yeah. So, um, and then we did Crow Wing, which is the black, and yeah. we did Poppies in Bloom. And the only one we're missing here today is A Night Without Stars, which right. is the navy. Yeah. Um, and I can show that actually by showing a picture of right. Christelle's catalog. So you yeah. get the idea. People have been asking for a DK. Yeah, um, 100% wool. 100% wool DK. This is it. 250 yards per 100 grams. Mm -hmm. And uh, three ply. Three ply. She picked the colors, yeah. but it's some good fall colors. Yeah. And so for those of you who are asking, it's now, there's now some up on our, sh on our web store. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's a little, it's a little bit different than the regular yarns that we make because it's actually dyed in the wool and then yeah. we spin the colored, the colored yeah. wool. And that's because um, for Christelle's project, she needs to have the wool on um, spools. Yeah. So we need to do it on cones for her. For yeah. The, so her this is one yarn stuff. of ours where you probably wouldn't need to alternate yeah because it's carded after it's been dyed mm -hmm. so it's well mixed like it went in your KitchenAid mixer yeah should be very even yeah yeah exactly. and it would make lovely sweaters yes it's very yeah it's so, so we'll put that here. up it's pretty exciting because a lot of people do come in and ask for DK and it's not something we typically have um, but it's really nice mm -hmm. Yeah. really soft yeah it's a lovely it's, yarn it's uh, soft and but it still has kind of that little bit of a rustic look yep. to it because it's our wool. I mean, that's yeah. the way that's the way it turns out. But it's uh, it's it has a really nice handle. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's lovely. It would make a lovely, lovely sweater. Like I said. Yeah. And of course, Crystal's hats. Yeah. So you uh, will put her information. You can go check out yeah. her if you haven't already from last time yeah. we talked about her. She's got a she's got quite a few items on her website that she tries to source everything in Canada. And she sells and sweaters, and they're yeah. gorgeous. Yes. We don't per supply the wool for the sweaters, no. but she has she has people local to her make them yeah. and she's stuff. Doing so. a really good thing, hundred yeah. percent Canadian made, and she's very proud of it. And yeah. we were happy. We were actually really really enjoy being part of that project. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> something uh, else we squoze in before yeah. the squoze. Oh, whatever. That's, that's a good maritime expression. <laughs> okay, so right. we did a big blitz on cocoa knits goodies. Right. Um, because they've been selling well and we just love the stuff. We love the stuff. And eventually we'll carry absolutely everything that they make. We're we're all about finding really good products that work yeah so you know that we're fans of the chiago needles and cocoa knits is for accessories yeah. and knitting notions is just our favorite yeah our favorite yeah so, so we have uh talked before about the stitch markers and of course we have the cocoa knit sweater workshop books mm -hmm. um but we got a, we added a few new things to our repertoire so i think we'll just keep, we have to grab all this it's all gone away to the other end of the table okay so firstly, they came out with a couple new types of stitch markers, and these ones are pretty familiar, but these are the jumbo size. So this is their closed ring, um, and they now come in jumbo. So if mm -hmm. you're doing a bulky knit, and just to give you an idea, 
they're quite yeah quite big yeah. so they will fit up to a 16 millimeter needle so that was obviously a gap that they felt needed filling mm -hmm. and there's 30 markers in in this cute little box yeah so that's the packaging is just yeah i just love obvious. everything about them i yeah. can't say enough okay so there's that then they recently came out with triangle stitch markers these are mm -hmm. also super cute um 36 mm -hmm. love the little tin and there's two different sizes. Yes. I don't know if it's listed what millimeters they go up to on here, but I certainly will be in the description mm -hmm. on the uh, on the website. So those are available now. Super cute. Yeah, love those. Then we got their cable needles. Yeah, the metal ones. Yeah, metal curved cable needles. Yeah. Which go, everything sticks to their yeah makers uh, yeah so do you want so if yeah. you haven't seen this this is the makers keep we ordered it in two colors so far so it goes on your wrist <laughs> and uh all of their stuff sticks to it so if you're going along you don't want to be digging oh yeah what a fun game yeah <laughs> it's like playing horseshoes yeah so super handy right and we've always wanted these they were back ordered for just a little bit of last year and then we just finally got around to getting them in so we've got the pale blue and we have a steel gray color and the makers keep it's called yeah. so if you've been wanting one of those i think most people have probably seen them around but now you can get them so here's the gray shows there but yeah. and they do make them in other colors but we'll start with these and see mm -hmm. how they go and mm -hmm. then eventually hopefully we'll have them all yeah it's kind of how we roll we and just every, see how things will yeah, sell and everything that's super they, comfy too eh? yeah everything that they make has, sticks to it i think uh probably yeah they, even much. if even there we're gonna show the bamboo cable yeah needle. they've got metal on them so they've got metal a metal band on them so that they they uh stick as well i don't so. want to open it because it's no. actually not a read oh no down in here it is okay. let's just try it um i'm sure that's why they, they have metal yeah. so these cable needles come in a set of five different sizes <laughs> they definitely stick yeah so that's super cool so there you go you won't lose your cable needle while you're working yeah. along so fun um so yeah we hope to bring all this stuff to knit east too like we said mm -hmm. oh and we're not able to make it to rhinebeck we thought we were going to be able to go mm -hmm. but as it turns out we can't this year so hopefully next year yeah um and of course we're still working on the pei <laughs> fiber festival Prince Edward Island fiber festival um which we mentioned last episode yeah. okay so just two more things from new from coco knits these little yarn snips which also stick to this yeah adorable yeah super very sharp. rustic and just well made a, like a yeah. beautiful leather um pouch it comes in pouch vegetable dyed it's oh you want all of it yeah throwing out all my other scissors <laughs> and then we got these claw clips because you know we're blocking nuts yeah and uh, this just helps with your blocking so if you're trying to make the edge of a sweater even you know the front and back it's kind mm -hmm. of hard to do you're putting the pin in this really helps hold the two sides of the fabric together yeah or you could use them any which way that you can see yeah. a use for them in blocking or I whatever you could also use them for sewing up yeah when you're i mean they're just like little sweater. clamps right yeah so there's you can never have too many clamps there's yeah. so many things you can do <laughs> Actually, you could use Sandra's clothespins for a lot of that stuff yeah, too. Yeah. As it turns out. So we now have these. Yeah. So we've added quite a lot to our repertoire, which we're really excited to share with everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just great to find stuff that you love yeah. and to help other people discover. It's a joy. Stuff too. Yeah, a joy to use the proper tools for things. Yeah, and too. it's all just beautiful. I was talking to a customer about that this afternoon. It's just having the the right tool for the right application and having a, something that's that's pleasant to use that yeah. you're not struggling against yeah. it's just and yeah. i know in one episode i was going i had my my stitch markers all in rainbow oriented yeah. like that really adds a lot of joy for me yeah if i can get in there with some color and just like i'm super crazy about my stitch markers like i yeah. can't do like for my hat it had seven repeats and they all had to be exactly the same it's a color it has to like right. contrast with the yarn to an appropriate degree like i'm really the the stitch marker setup is part of my process <laughs> that good. i love it's fun 
Yeah. And they uh, they use the colors in the coconuts method yes, too. Yes, of for course. Sweaters. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. there is so a it goes there is the a par, par, pro, uh, another purpose besides just uh, bringing joy, joy to, to people because who like color. rainbows. Yeah. yeah. Speaking, and speaking of rainbows. Color. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, I'm just like <laughs> I'm just like wow. angry at the evening news. Yeah. So this is fun. So these knit blockers, we since love. we mentioned them, have been really popular, and yeah. we love using them. Yes. There's the only way to block, as far as I'm concerned now and I have to say I was a bit skeptical at first yeah I was like they seem why kind of clunky and why would no yeah they're the best thing ever right pulling out six little pin picky pins when you could just pull this out with a oh jeez <laughs> with a lovely big handle and like do all yeah. that no and I would say it, you you can block in half the time yes and yeah. taking on assembling it most yes. importantly when you're dying to get that sweater off so you right. can try it on right away or in time for podcast recording you only have to pull out a few things instead of fiddling around with all those yeah. T-pins. No offense to the T-pins. Um, but now they come in rainbow. Yeah. So, you know. Just for fun. I like that even more. Yes. There's no reason for it. <laughs> um, so we have them now in white and in rainbow. Yeah. So yeah, we went on a look. Jeez, we went on a little bit of a buying spree. Right, and then. And then. How exciting! The Saltwater Classics book. Wow. So Saltwater Mittens has been a huge hit. Yeah. Um, this has wonderful patterns in it, including mittens. Yeah. So you could just get this one if you if you haven't already gotten the yeah. other one. I just want to show my favorite favorite thing in here. These little boot cuffs. Yeah. Which I really want to make. They're socks, slippers. Look at these. Go inside your boot. Yeah. I need these. Yeah. I don't think I have boots like that. I need boots like that and then I need these. <laughs> so okay. people have been knitting the mittens out of our worsted, Selkirk worsted, and I don't know, yeah. there's probably varies from pattern to pattern what you would use, but these books are so fun and they're yeah. full of really interesting content. Sort of, you know, well, I mean, they can't write a knitting book without storytelling, right? Yes, because it is right. the Maritimes. Well, the Atlantic provinces, sorry. Newfoundland is in there, so it's yeah. the Atlantic provinces. But um, beautiful. Yeah. I just love this whole it's thing. A, it's really uh, a book, and this is what's happening, is the minute you open it, you just go, oh, 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 oh. And yeah. We're just, oh, it's look just, the mittens with the hearts on them. Oh, yeah. Where did those right go? Right on the cover. Yeah, well, there's a bigger picture. And look at this cute little cap. Yeah. And you haven't lived until you've read some Newfoundland place names. I can tell you that yeah. right now. So <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you've never been to Heart's Content or Heart's Desire or any of those yeah. places. Um, but it's a thing. Yeah. They have a so, moose hat. Did you see oh my that? gosh. Hello Goodbye. Is that the name of a place? I don't know. It could be. It's yeah. Newfoundland. Anything yeah. goes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, here's the heart mittens. Yeah, it's yeah. really nice. Book. That would be yeah, and you know, Newfoundland is a beautiful place to visit. Mm -hmm. um, got a lot going on down here. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if you haven't been to uh, the Atlantic provinces in Canada, you're missing out, we think. Yeah, we think so. And uh, Jennifer Beale also lives in St. John's, Newfoundland, and all of her patterns are named after places in, in Newfoundland yeah. as well, pretty well. So I think <laughs> there's some cute ones coming out. Yeah. And she, I think, she has, has a, a heart's content sweater. Oh, yes, I think yeah. so. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's really, it's worthwhile just looking at the map of Newfoundland and yeah. looking at some of those yeah. names. I think when you see those places over in Scotland and Ireland and whatnot where there's like sheep wandering the roads and stuff, Newfoundland is as close as we get to that. Yes. Yeah, and that is what's happening there. The or at least it was the last time I was there. Rustic. You yeah. had sheep walking We down had there? cows, I think. Cow, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, walking down the road. Yeah. I've never experienced that there. However, well, you didn't go with Dad. No, I wasn't <laughs> in the outports, but I used to have to go to St. John's as part of my job. It was part of my territory when yeah. I was a sales rep. And um, they actually, when you went to, uh, I think most people in North America anyway will know what Tim Hortons is, but it's yeah. a very famous cotton. That's one of those flies just oh, landed okay. on your head. Oh, no. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, Tim Hortons is uh, a famous co coffee shop, like Dunkin' Donuts or whatever. Right, it's yeah. like, they, probably, I'll get letters about It's not like Dunkin' Donuts. Anyway, you know what I mean? A retail coffee shop. Yeah. And, um, they, uh, I went with my client, my customer, and we went to Tim Hortons, and she said um, that, uh, she said, and, and Kim will take a coffee with real milk. 
Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what do you mean real milk? What do you mean? And she goes, oh, well, because you have to specify because we, they, Tim Hortons sir, would serve their coffee with evaporated milk if you want Which it. I love. Is that where dad gets that from? I'm taking it right off. I love evaporated milk in my coffee. Yeah. I don't do it every day, but I always have some on hand in case yeah. I run out of milk. It's like a little treat. But they don't. Uh, they don't. They don't have a lot of land that's good for agriculture. So they didn't have like. There's not like there's herds of dairy cows no. all over the place. They would there. never be able to get hay. Oh my and gosh. And they're. Um, it's an island. Yeah. So they rely. They relied on shipping and stuff like that. So they didn't have access to fresh milk. Yeah. So that's what it was, fresh milk. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know, what other kind of milk is not fresh? I don't oh, want I it. I love the evaporated it was, milk. It was evaporated milk in a can, and Tim Hortons was still was yeah. still serving them. I, that was a while ago. Such an sure, East Coast but, girl. I yeah. didn't know that's where that came from. For sure that's where Dad got it. Yeah. Or maybe Cape Breton, too, when he was yes. growing up. Yes, yeah. yeah. They were pretty isolated. I even have it on my cereal sometimes. You do? I, I don't think I like it. I love it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's what oh. I'm used to. I guess you can get it everywhere. Yeah, it's the bomb. Is Carnation it evaporated milk. Is no. It? Oh. It's not thick. Okay. It's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like the Eagle brand if condensed you, milk. No. That's not it. It's not the sweetened condensed milk yeah. that goes on those dreamy square things. Yeah, no, no, that's just what I like. plain evaporated no, milk. I know. I know. Sometimes I put it. Carnation. Seriously. Makes sense. I've had I had it on my cereal this week. You did? This is something you didn't know about me. No. I'm right on it. Oh god. I'm you're such a nice coaster. You're a closet. A closet <laughs> evaporated milk user. Yeah. Sometimes I do powder well, milk too. Not- Oh, doesn't bother me at all. No, I love it. Oh, right on the cereal. No, evaporated is one thing, but as they say around here, milk. give her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds us of a story that our that our parents reminded of us when were reminded me of when they were here is that my my sister, my other sister, our other sister has a, a daughter. She's older now, but when she was I don't know like ten or eleven or something, there's nothing better. Then my grandmother used to bake fresh bread and you wouldn't put any butter on it or anything. You would just put molasses right on it. And molasses, when you put molasses on warm, fresh bread, I don't know what it does, but it gets seeps into the, into the um, bread and it almost makes it like a, has a harder texture to it. It's almost, I don't know why, what it does. No, my mouth is water. Yeah, yeah. It's some kind of thing. Anyway. You could put butter on it and then put molasses, but we molasses always... and butter together are delicious. Yeah. And molasses on bacon. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so you always had we always had molasses on fresh bread. That's just something that we always had. So my dad had gone to um, the market and bought a fresh loaf of white bread and brought it home. And my niece was there. And um, she said, well, granddad, can I have a slice of the fresh bread? And dad said, of course. And would you want molasses on it? She said, molasses? What's molasses? She didn't even know what it was. <laughs> she didn't know what it was. And yeah. he said to her, oh, you don't know what molasses is? What kind of pioneer are you? And she said, what's a pioneer? <laughs> <laughs> Not so into roughing it. No. Yeah. No. City girl. Yeah, anyway, yeah. that's part of our uh, our heritage and yes. just like, yeah, stuff you could store. And I mean, I don't know, uh, Cape Breton and Newfoundland, they were the wilds yeah. not too long yeah. ago. Yeah. I mean, I think somebody, they only got electricity out here in the 60s, is that right? Or indoor plumbing? Well, they- the, the woman um, that owned uh, the house that we live in said yeah. that they got their bathroom the year they got married, I think, and it was yeah. 1956. Okay. Yeah, so, so the house, and indoor, it was an outhouse indoor, up, up until yeah, that point. Yeah, and that what's funny is we call it the woodshed. But oh no, that was the pump pump room. I yeah. think the pump. It was the, well, the pump house, and then the it was house. the woodshed. And yeah, and then um, so she used to go when they first were married. She used to go out to the pump house to get water. Yeah, and then they stored wood, yeah, in it. and the then we made our first little sh- uh, shop. Yeah, yeah, and I think she so, said it was 1956 when they got. Yeah, so no, you know, we're remote, and they had party lines until the 80s, which yeah. is where you share your phone line with a bunch of other people, and it's yeah. just you use it when no one else is on. You have it. different rings. Yeah, and you could are... hold the button down and be like, yeah, <laughs> not that anyone ever did that. 
Of course not. <laughs> There's a really funny story about that too, where they uh, they grew tobacco here for a certain amount, like some kind of I don't know what why they I guess because they could it was make very a lot of money. popular for a while. Yeah, yeah, they were they were growing tobacco. And what was the story? You were the one that heard. Well, the story somebody first. from one of the tobacco companies was from here. Virginia. Yeah, and I no, here. I think it was Georgia or something oh, okay. like that. Anyway, okay. I'm probably gonna get this wrong. So Louise, if you're watching this, yeah, forgive Louise me. Our neighbor, you know, yeah, this yeah. is her mother <laughs> that was worked the switchboard, which used to be contained in our house. So our yeah. house has actually been the post office, the switchboard, and the library for the community at one time. Yeah. Now all the rooms are ours. Yeah. But uh, it was often let out for communities. So service. we've got like uh, electrical outlets and halfway up places. the wall for the switchboard and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So. Anyway, they had the switchboard and there was an executive visiting and uh, he was looking for, I think, a farmer that he was supposed to meet with or whatever. And she just <laughs> called around everybody's farm from the switchboard to find, is he over there? No. Okay, wait, I'll find him for you. And she just kept going yeah. until she found the person. And then so every time she talked to somebody, they would say, yeah, I think I saw him going there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was just... Oh my word! <laughs> you know, she found him. <laughs> yeah, she found him. Yeah, yeah. He well, he's here somewhere. He you might know. have been at Cooper's. Yeah. <laughs> Let's call over there and just see if they've seen him. <laughs> so anyway, it's uh, it's quite it's different. Yeah, yeah, it's fun to think about that stuff, and it really wasn't that long ago. No, it's remote. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're remote. It's yeah. an island. Yeah. And Newfoundland is an island away out in the ocean. Yeah. And Cape Breton is an island too, although they have a yeah. cause. And effect. Cape Breton and Newfoundland. I mean, PEI is an island. Island. and I mean there could be isolation and everything especially if the weather was bad and it was served only by fairies yeah so if the fairies couldn't go we talked about this before yeah, when there's storms and yeah. stuff it, it's an island but um, in Newfoundland and in parts of Cape Breton it was actually very isolated yeah like my you know they like to tell the story of my grandfather having to go on snowshoes to yeah. the post office from where they lived when he was a park yeah. warden in the, the well Cape we Breton Highland park. had people here that had to go out to the road on snowshoes yes. to get to work yes <laughs> Just within the last couple of years. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, and for everybody who's sitting at home, and I know there are many of you thinking, are they talking about Newfoundland? Yeah. It's Newfoundland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you're going to come, practice that up. We'll yeah. help you. Yeah. They'll Just know right away that you're going to on it because it is Newfoundland. So yeah. that's how that goes. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's spelled like Newfoundland. Never but call it that. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Newfoundland. Yeah. All right. So what else? What are we rambling about now? Okay. We're rambling about place names. Okay. <laughs> and there's no ask us uh, anything. Oh, nobody yeah. cared. No, okay. no. We answered all the questions last time. Yeah. And we did we talk about the t-shirts and children's No. Nope. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. So this is, was really fun and exciting. So we, James Bond t-shirts, so quite a few of them have gone out and we do have them all in stock now. So there's right. no waiting to get them shipped. Yeah. And we ordered them in youth sizes now too. Because yeah. how fun is that? This must be a big one. Extra large child, child child's extra youth. Large. Well, they're youth. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. not like infant sizes. Okay. Um, so the smallest one. Wow, somebody really rearranged all these so that they're right upside down. Sure. <laughs> extra small. Oh, okay. Yeah, Huge. so this is the smallest. So it's yeah. not like extra small like a baby, but I have posted the measurements on the listing, so just be careful when you're ordering. Mm. Um, but, like, who wouldn't love a t-shirt with a little James Bond on it? Yeah. And James Bond has been making the rounds in this t-shirt, let me tell you. He yeah. was in a cabinet meeting. He was At, at the, oh, in the legislature. Yeah. <laughs> He was out with the, our MLA, which is our member of the Legislative Assembly, on yeah. the 70 Mile Yard Sale, yeah. and he was he came to Atlantic Blue, Ken Warren, yeah, um, out to that concert, and so he's really making the rounds. So everybody's like, "What's with the sheep?" Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> some people are confused. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, and of course I wear them all the time. But mm -hmm. It's just a joyful, yeah, little, little thing to have on. So yeah. now we have That's added more sizes. So great. we have men's, women's, and youth sizes, and I think we're gonna add Heather Gray at some point. Yes. but. Uh, not everybody likes to wear a white t-shirt. No. Um, so that's coming up. Yep. So, and the bags are on the way. People yes, asked for yes. project bags. And they'll probably be listed by the time you uh, watch this. But I don't have one to show you. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking everyone would be more comfortable if they saw us actually rifling through the bag and showing what right. it looked like. But they are actually with the Canadian Postal Service right now yes. on their way to us. And they have James Bond on them and they have yeah. a zipper. Yeah, a zipper, zipper and a pocket inside and they're really yeah. quite nice. Yeah. 
Um, they have a black bottom that matches James's nose and I think we're gonna really love them. So they are on the way. So the James Bond Project bags will definitely be here by next episode. But if you check now, they might actually be listed online already because they should be here any day. Oh. Good. Oh, okay, so I think that's it. Join the Ravelry group. Yep. This and is the, this is the roundup. <laughs> <laughs> and if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. And or subscribe, yep. which helps us get viewed more on YouTube, which will help our little podcast grow and get us out to yep. more people. And you can share on Facebook. Yep. Share on Facebook if you don't mind or talk about it on Instagram. That all yep. helps us get viewers, which just helps the whole thing mm -hmm. work better overall. Right. So that YouTube is kind to us because there's lots of competition for knitting podcasts out there. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah. So it's getting dark now. I know. It's thank goodness we're closed on Tuesdays again soon so we can do this Tuesday After morning. Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. One more recording in this dreary darkness. Darkness. It doesn't help that it's overcast every day we go to do it either. Yeah. But it makes it even darker faster. But all right, so thanks. Okay. So thanks to everybody for joining us again or joining us for the first time. Yeah. And we'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. Great. Bye. Bye.